Hi, I'm Alessandro Fael Garcia, technical marketing engineer at Nginx. Today, I'd like to show you how you can easily automate your Nginx controller deployment in AWS in three simple steps. First things first though, let me start by giving you a brief overview of Nginx and Nginx controller for those of you that might not be familiar with either solution. For those of you that don't know much about Nginx, Nginx was created in 2004 and has over time increased in popularity as the fastest web server within the community. And you know, don't take my word for it, there's plenty of benchmarks available online. As of today, it's the most used web server in the world. And as you can see in the graph included in the slide here, it's been steadily growing in popularity. Feel free to gift the pun, Nginx C is very much like a Formula 1 car. Nginx is blazingly fast and this is only possible thanks to a carefully curated engine, or codebase, and a very lightweight encasing. Nginx only takes around 8 megabytes on Alpine Linux. When you combine these two facts, you end up with a highly performant minimum latency, easy to deploy anywhere piece of software. And if you add into the mix that Nginx can also be configured as a reverse proxy, an API gateway or a web application firewall, amongst many other use cases, well, Nginx becomes increasingly attractive. But say you already have a few Nginx instances and it's starting to get a bit troublesome to manage all of them. What can you do? Enter Nginx Controller. Nginx Controller is a centralized monitoring and management platform for Nginx that allows you to easily configure and manage Nginx Plus instances to accomplish your desired use case. Nginx Controller includes solid support for real based access control, various ecosystem integrations, and a native AWS plugin. Deploying Nginx Controller is not necessarily hard. But in this day and age, automation is king. So let's say you're interested in, in Nginx controller, or maybe you're already using it. How can you automate Nginx controller's deployment? Well, before we delve into automation, let's quickly review Nginx controller's requirements. First, there's two hard requirements. A PostgreSQL database instance, running either version 9.5 or version 12 of PostgreSQL, and a user with the CreateDB permission. And an Nginx controller instance, obviously, containing both the Nginx controller installation files and with all the required packages installed beforehand. Then, there's the optional requirements. First, there's an SMTP instance to process any outgoing emails sent by Nginx controller, such as, for example, downtime alerts. Now, this step is optional since you can forego an SMTP instance altogether by discarding SMTP traffic on the localhost, but doing so is not recommended in production environments. And second, as you need a series of Nginx Plus instances to be managed by Nginx Controller. Now, Nginx Controller does not automatically provision Nginx instances for you, nor do you need any Nginx Plus instances running to use Nginx Controller. But you will not be able to deploy any Nginx controller managed configurations until you connect an Nginx Plus instance to Nginx controller using the Nginx controller agent. For local or development environments, deploying Nginx controller is relatively trivial. More so if you decide to forego an external database and an SMTP service. However, when you start to consider a production ready deployment, things get a bit trickier. In fact, this here is a dependency graph showcasing the minimum AWS resources required for a minimal Nginx controller AWS production environment, including only a single Nginx Plus instance. Now, if this sounds cumbersome and complex to you, well, it can be. And if for whatever reason you need to redeploy Nginx controller stack, well, it can take quite some time to reconfigure. Enter automation. Turns out it's relatively trivial to automate Nginx controller's deployment using Packer, Terraform, and Danceable. And it can be done in three simple steps. Step 1. Use Packer to pre-bake Nginx controller MEIs using Packer's Ansible provisioner. Step 2. 
use Terraform to deploy Nginx controllers infrastructure on AWS. And step 3. Use Ansible to install and configure Nginx controller and the Nginx controller agent on Nginx Plus instances. If you have never heard of these tools beforehand, in short, Piker is a tool to create machine images, Terraform is a tool to deploy infrastructure as code, and Ansible is a provisionment and configuration management tool. But that's probably enough talking for now. How about I show you? I've gone ahead and opened up a small demo that I've programmed, and within this simple demo, I have developed some Piker templates, some um, Terraform scripts and some Ansible playbooks to accomplish each of the steps that are just detailed. So let's go ahead and look at some of the Piker templates first that I've programmed. First things first, I have an Nginx Piker template to deploy Nginx Plus and create an Nginx Plus AMI in AWS using the Amazon Dash EBS builder, it's just a normal Amazon builder using Packer and for AMIs. And uh, what this playbook is doing, well, what this Packer template is doing in the end is just calling Ansible to provision an, AD, an AMI. And you can see the playbook here, it's a very simple playbook using the official Nginx sync. Dot Nginx, well, the official Nginx will to install Nginx and Nginx Plus. Similarly, I have an Nginx controller Packer template that does much of the same. It again uses the Amazon Builder and it uses the Ansible provisioner, provisioner to install some of the prerequisites required by Nginx controller, which in this case involve the contract, contract, JQ and SOCAD packages, and disabling swap since Nginx controller runs on Kubernetes and, well, you need to disable swap off to, for Kubernetes to work properly. Worth pointing is that uh, I am also uploading the tarball, the Nginx controller tarball, into my AMI by default, so that whenever I want to spin up a new Nginx controller instance, or I need to reprovision Nginx controller, I already will have the main tarball in my AMI and I will not have to load it again. And then, similarly, I have a PostgreSQL Packer template using Ansible again to install and configure PostgreSQL as required for Nginx controller, which involves creating a user with the CreateDB permission and then I'm also creating a simple database that this user will have access over with. And I'm configuring Postgres here to accept incoming connections from external instances. And finally, and perhaps the least interesting of all, I am deploying... I'm also creating an SMTP Packer image using MailDev, which is a mock SMTP server built with Node.js. Cool, so then the next step is Terraform. Step two. Within Terraform, I have created five modules. Each module being responsible, f well, a module to create the network infrastructure required by Nginx controller, and then four modules each deploying one of the components will hire for Nginx controller, whether that's Nginx Plus, which is deployed by the Nginx module. As you can see, uh, all it's doing is deploying uh, an Nginx Plus AWS instance, and then creating some security groups and ensuring that it has outbound access in the port required by the Nginx controller agent. Similarly, we also have an Nginx controller module, which is deploying the Nginx controller, AMI in this case, around. Now, Nginx controller has a big uh, volume size requirement, especially if you are using the local database for analytics, which I am doing in my case. And thus, I have modified the volume size to be 130 gigabytes by default. 
Then uh, the Linux controller also requires a fully qualified domain name to work properly. So I am uh, I've already created a domain name beforehand in AWS RAID 53 and I have assigned it an elastic IP address. So what I'm doing here is I'm fetching the corresponding public IP, well, an and elastic IP association ID using the data fetching capabilities within Terraform. And I am associating the Elastic IP that I created for Nginx controller to the Nginx, Nginx controller instance. Finally, again, sending out some security groups. PostgreSQL and uh, the SMTP server are getting very similar to the Nginx Plus instance. Nginx Plus module. The main uh, thing to call out is that this time around I am opening up port 5432 on PostgreSQL, but I'm only allowing incoming connections from within my same um, VPC, AWS VPC, by setting the, well, the source IP in this case to the CIDR block for the VPC that I'm at. Similarly, the same thing happens with the SMTP group in here. Although this time around, since it's an SMTP server and it's a mock SMTP server, and I want to check that uh, they also are being correctly sent by Nginx controller, I'm also opening up port 80, which is where the mail dev mock SMTP server is going to be listening for incoming requests. And finally, just Ansible, which I am using to A, install Nginx controller in the Nginx controller instance. Once the Nginx controller instance gets deployed and the Elastic IP gets correctly associated. Now I am installing Nginx controller at boot time of the, for the Nginx controller instance because some of the variables and parameters that it uses depend on the current networking environment and the database and SMTP IPs. And since that will change between deployments, it's better to just redeploy Nginx controller on, a, on any fresh boot. And then once I install Nginx controller, I also post my license to Nginx controller to activate it. And then in turn, once Nginx controller gets installed, I am installing the Nginx controller agent on the Nginx Plus instances using the Nginx controller agent role, which can be seen here. And finally, once the Nginx, once Nginx controller gets installed, I am installing the Nginx controller agent on the all my Nginx Plus instances by using the Nginx controller agent role included in the official Nginx controller collection, which I should have mentioned before, I'm also using the official Nginx controller collection to install Nginx controller. And once that is done, once the agent is installed, uh, well, Nginx controller should be ready to be used and deploy any Nginx configurations to your Nginx Plus instances. Now, for the purposes of this demo, I've gone ahead and combined the Packer, Terraform, and Ansible steps within a single Terraform script. Because Terraform has some very nice dependency mapping capabilities, which let me just use a single file to build and launch all the Packer builds in parallel, and also then deploy the Ansible playbooks whenever the various instances are ready for it. So with that being said, let's go ahead and try to deploy the script. Now, before we do that, I'm just gonna go real quick to the Nginx controller Qualified domain that I registered beforehand, which will be over here just to test that there's nothing right now there. And well, it's not loading because there is nothing listening really. Let's go ahead 
and within my demo directory, simply run terraform apply auto approve and wait till it gets deployed. That is gonna take a little time, so I'll be back once it gets deployed. And we'll see whether Nginx controller got deployed or not. And uh, we're back. Looks like Nginx controller got correctly deployed, and so did the Nginx controller agent, which you can see over here, that was the last thing that actually got deployed using uh, Ansible. I'll also go real quick, just show you some of the output. You can see the deployment took around 10 minutes to complete more realistically. It can take around 15, 20 minutes, especially if you're also building the AMIs from scratch, which I did not this time around. But besides that, uh, uh, it's a pretty painless Terraform takes charge of everything for you. It'll deploy every module, create the instances, the security groups, etc. etc. And it's also pretty fast at doing it since it's interacting with the AWS API directly. So something like creating a, let's see, a security group. Security group rules. Let's see, how long does it take? Well, I can't really see any rules right now for whatever reason, but say something like an agent. There we go. There we go. Something like an agent can only take like 18. Like an instance will only take like 18 to 20 seconds to launch, which is so much faster than anything you'd be able to achieve via DAWS graphical user interface. So now just to finally test that and the controller got correctly deployed, let's go back to our browser and hit refresh. It's gonna say that my connection is not private, which is true because I'm using self-signed certs right now. Again, you should not do that in production. But for ease of use, I just self-signed the certs right now. It'll take me to the login page. Let's go ahead and log in. F5.com, this is like a standard user account. Just for demo purposes, should probably not. Call your account, Jundo. And you can see the landing page for Nginx controller. Right now there's not much running, so it's pretty empty. But let's go ahead and check whether my Nginx Plus instance got correctly linked. And yes, looks like the controller agent is working correctly in my Nginx Plus instance. Which, as it turns out, is listening on the 10.0.0.76 private IP within my AWS VPC. Great, so it looks like everything worked correctly. And if you want to learn more about my demo or, you know, have another look at it or whatnot, it's available on GitHub. So I, by all means, recommend you go check it out. And that's all I had to share today. Visit us at nginx.com slash product slash nginx controller if you would like to know more about how you can achieve secure, scalable and resilient application delivery with nginx controller. You can also find us on Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn and other social media. Thank you for watching the session and uh, I hope you have a great uh, rest of your day.